Good evening from the Cole Center. I'm Todd Nolesky here from the Wisconsin State Journal uh, with a post-game wrap-up of the Badgers' 3-2 victory against Michigan State here on Saturday, January 15th. It's a uh, sweep for the Badgers. Their first sweep of a Big Ten team here in the Cole Center since March of 2019, which I had to go back and look at a couple of times to make sure it was right. Now, last season, the Badgers played at LeBron Arena and they swept three Big Ten teams, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State. Uh, but the fans hadn't seen the sweep of a Big Ten team since uh, 2019 then, obviously. Uh, there weren't any in the 1920 season. Um, they've swept some non-conference series, but never a Big Ten sweep, full six-point sweep until uh, tonight. Uh, the Badgers get that done with a pair of power play goals from uh, Brock Caulfield and Matty D. St. Fall in the third period uh, during a major penalty after a head contact uh, penalty on Kyle Haskins from Michigan State. That came with 15-15 um, left in the third period um, after the Badgers had already killed a Michigan State power play early in the third on a Carson Bantle penalty. Got a couple of uh, blocks, one from uh, Brock Caulfield, his second block on a penalty kill of the game. He had one on a major penalty early uh, in, in the, had one in the first period on that one. So it was one of those games where it, um, I, I don't think there was a, a, a clear sense of anyone being that much better, either team being that much better than the other throughout. Although I did think the Badgers had better chances, scoring chances. Um, Michigan State scored twice on plays within, you know, five or ten seconds of faceoffs in the second period, uh, and that was uh, enough to take a two-one lead in the third period. But the Badgers got those uh, power play opportunities, and that that power play started off a little bit ragged. Um, I, I counted, well, one, a couple of clears and a couple of face-offs had to restart things. Um, a couple of cycles through the penalty killing unit, or power play unit, sorry. Uh, and then eventually, uh, Tark Baker sets up Brock Caulfield for a one-timer from the top of the slot, and th that goes in, makes it 2-2. Two -two. And then a minute and 24 seconds later, uh, Matty de Saint Fall scores uh, also from the high slot with a snapshot. Uh, his third goal of the weekend, so expect to see him, him among the uh, three stars from the Big Ten this week. Um, he's 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 pretty hot for the Badgers right now. Um, he had one goal in his first what was it, 16 games, 15 games, something like that, uh, and now he's got seven to lead the team. So um, it's it's going right for Matt V. St. Fall these last few weeks, really since the start of December. And at that kind of coincides with when things have picked up for the Badgers. Um, they got five goals yesterday, got three today. They're nudging above three goals a game in this last now eight game stretch uh, in which they're four, two and two. Uh, you know, not setting the world afire by any means being four, two and two, but uh, compared to where they were uh, after losing twice to Michigan State, then a uh, loss in a tie to Clarkson here, then that exhibition game loss to the under-18 team, which really just throw it out because no, nobody, it was pretty obvious there were very few people that wanted to be here that night uh, for the Badgers, and that came uh, you know, at a point where they were down, and they started to turn that around, but it uh, it started with that Penn State series. They they didn't get a sweep there. They lost the second game in overtime. Then they uh, were on break. They went to Milwaukee, won the holiday faceoff with a win and a tie, a shootout win. Uh, then they played, uh, you know, all things considered, they played fairly well last week in, in Ohio, against Ohio State, didn't get the results. They got a uh, one point out of six. Uh, but Tony Granado has also mentioned that that's the hardest week he thought he's had here, I think is what he said tonight. Uh, I'm not quoting directly there, but uh, that's um, 
having the 16 players in quarantine for that week uh, and then coming out and playing um, was difficult for them and it showed. Um, but they've uh, turned that into this week getting a couple of victories and uh, nudging ahead of Michigan State in the fifth place in the Big Ten. It's you know pretty early to be worrying about what place you're in, but I think it's, it's noteworthy that the Badgers are a little bit farther out of uh, the basement than they were a couple of weeks ago. So uh, let me get to a couple questions here. Eric asks, does the Major Rowan mean a mandatory additional susp suspension for next weekend? Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, Rowan Sean is out for next Friday's game, as I understand it, because the game misconduct he got along with his um, major penalty for head contact in the first period uh, was his third game misconduct of the season. Um, now you, you can look at the box scores from the regular season and only see two, but the one from the exhibition game against Duluth uh, at the start of October also counts. That's the only thing that counts from exhibition games is if anyone gets a, a misconduct or a disqualification that does reflect on your record. So um, there's a uh, that's going to be another hole for the Badgers. You'll probably remember that Ashan was suspended for the semifinals of the Holiday Faceoff uh, for a, uh, a, a, a not remembering it right off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it was a head contact uh, penalty against Penn State the last game before break. So uh, they will have to go again uh, next Friday at Penn State without him. Lydia says, is it worth starting to look at conference standings? I generally don't until February, but I'm getting hyped now. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, well, uh, yes, I think it's, so we're in the, the back half of the Big Ten schedule now. Uh, and I think looking at it in the first half is a little bit, you know, it, it's tough to draw any real conclusions out of it. But you're starting to see some separations in the standings. You've got the, you know, the Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State, Notre Dame cluster. Then you've got Wisconsin, Michigan State, with a little bit of room now between those two and Penn State at the bottom. So um, it's, I, I, I would say that, you know, still 10 games to be played by all teams except Minnesota now. Um, so a lot of hockey left to be played, but yeah, you know, why not? Uh, Eric with a shout out to Lydia there in the comments uh, for being in the alumni band, but uh, yes, I think people who are here appreciate that it being part of the atmosphere. Um, I think that's just about, about going to wrap it up here tonight uh, for the uh, uh, this series. Um, we will be back. Uh, I don't believe, I'm, I'm not sure about next weekend yet. I'm not going to Penn State, so I don't know how much I'll be able to bring you after that, but um, we will see. So. Uh, make sure you check out the story on madison.com. That's up now, uh, and uh, it'll be in Sunday's State Journal. So appreciate you, as always, for being here and for reading and for being a subscriber and uh, all those good things. So uh, have a good night, everyone. Once again, the final score tonight, Badgers 3, Michigan State 2, and we'll catch you next time.